Welcome to episode five of The Flashback. I'm Richard. I'm here with Yuval and Bo. Hello. Hello. All right. Today we have some amazing topics to talk about. Jerry Thompson, the World's uh, Championship that just happened this weekend, uh, our top picks for Guilds of Ravnica, and uh, the HTS Top uh, 8. Fuck. HT, <laughs> the Harry T. Challenger Series Top 8. Uh, we're going to talk about some of the top decks uh, and just kind of how the event went overall. Yeah, and then you know we also have uh, the f- summer season of League Series ending uh, this week. Yes. So... We're going to see who the top players are and who's basically in the points lead. Uh, awesome. The top players, of course, will get uh, free entry into uh, next season. Yeah, yeah, next season. Next season and that, with the exception of draft. Uh, they get a discounted yeah. draft, but that's uh So that's well, very basically cool. all the events cost $10 and you get... Uh, free entry, and then the draft costs twenty, so you just get ten dollars off. So you get a ten dollars yeah. entry. Yeah, right? uh, and, and the reason why you know uh, the draft is different, obviously, is because we have now tariffs to deal with. Yes, pricing to pay out, and you and know, it, like you get packs, right? Like in a normal event, you just bring your own deck and all that. Like in in a draft, we are supplying you with products, so it can't just like be free product, right? Like yeah, we, exactly. It, we'd be losing money. I mean, but everybody everybody knows how draft works. All right, so <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's uh, start off with you know the boogeyman in the room this weekend, uh, Jerry Thompson dropping out of Worlds in protest of Wizards' treatment of pro players. Yeah. Uh, so. I kind of want to say this has the Magic community divided, but currently pretty much every person I'm talking to is just kind of completely on his side on this. Um, so basically, I think a large like a large part of his reason for not going to the World Championships uh, was just kind of issues he had with um, how Wizards treats its pro players. Um and, and Wizards treats their pro players vastly differently than other, uh, say, competitive games like Hearthstone. Yeah, like Hearthstone or Dota, something like that. Like these games have huge payouts in their big tournaments. Um, they have huge followings that leads to sponsors sponsorships for the uh, pro players. It turns on streaming capabilities because um, a lot of these games either look pretty or you know are just like well known games that people play and want to watch and. Uh, the people streaming these games because they're so popular are making a lot of money because a lot of people watch their streams. So is Wizards doing enough to market uh, the pro players? Jerry Jerry Thompson is saying no, right? So th- this is his issue. Uh, I would have to say I, I probably agree with um, JT just because, like, I can name on one hand professional players that I knew before I heard Jerry Thompson's name, right? Like... I don't know a lot of the professional Magic players. So I'm going to say that's probably a failure on, on Wizards' part. I, I would tend to agree. Like uh, Prior to like you know Star City Games and their high profile of how they uh, profile players and that, it's, yeah. it's vastly different to how Wizards of the Coast does it. Wizards kind of just like during the event, they profile the players, but they don't really do anything between them. And I don't even see that happen very often. No. Right? Uh, so, like, how do you market this? Like, what is the marketing? Is it our sponsors, like, you know, like Ultimate Guard or Channel Fireball or Genesis or I always butcher this name, Haruya? Haruya. Yeah. I think it's like Hallelujah. Yeah. Uh, like, <laughs> I mean, what, is, uh, what does team sponsorship mean? Like, obviously, during the Pro Tour and during Worlds, these guys are going to be looking for teammates for the next coming season. Right. Uh, so, I mean, does it put the onus on the sponsor? Like, you know, I've heard that there are some teams that play StarCraft where the sponsor literally puts these guys up in a house, pays them to play all this just yes. for, like, a cut of their winnings. Yeah. And is that the is that the direction that we should be looking at for Magic? I feel like... This is entirely opinion based, but I think that would be really cool. I think it would be right? cool as well. Uh, but I mean, that also puts a lot of pressure on you know, uh, you know, companies and stores and et cetera. Especially you know, there are small stores that have teams that go to the pro tour. Yeah. Uh, and like, what does that say? Like, are those stores supposed to be just looking out for 
uh, themselves? Are they looking out for their pros, et cetera? Like, what so is their incentive? I think, I think the incentive for teams to have sponsor to make sponsorships is just advertising. So, I mean, like, how much advertising does does it need? I mean, Ultimate Guard sponsors a lot of events, uh, both you know internationally, locally, et cetera. Um, do we need to bring in people like you know Red Bull or like Monster? Or I I don't think we need to, but I think this is kind of what Jerry wants because that's how people start actually making money from playing this game, right? The issue us uh, I hear stated a lot is there is no incentive whatsoever to become a pro Magic player, like. The only reason people become pro magic players is because they love playing the game and don't want to just be losing money on it, right? Like, they, they don't want to be just constantly buying decks and then, you know, whatever. But they're never actually making enough money for it to actually be something that they could conceivably be doing all the time. Like, a lot of pro magic players have a job because if they didn't, they wouldn't be able to support their life, right? That's so, fair. I mean, whether it be writing or, you know, uh, GP appearances, pro tour appearances, et cetera, they're making an income somehow, but it's uh, from the perspective that I've seen, it's not enough. Yeah. Uh, where comparatively other, uh, like... Other professional, other professionally pro played games have uh, players who get paid enough to literally do just that and look at Brian have Kibler. a global wage. Like yeah, Brian Kibler's moved over example, to Hearthstone because Hearthstone's payout is better. Yep. And you know, I th I when I think of Brian Kibler, I think of him of course as a Magic player, but yeah. also now he's a Hearthstone player. He's a commentator. I he think is him a, as a turn one play, Llanowar Elves player. Yeah, he's a turn one Llanowar Elves player. So right. uh, that's uh, uh, definitely a thing. So, what do you think Wizards should do? <sighs> oh, I don't know. I feel like if they made their coverage much better and found ways to get people to watch their like big events they'd have larger followings and more people would watch it, more people would know the game that would increase uh, the likelihood of sponsorships it would make streaming much better um so i think if they just kind of work on making their own events larger more accessible more advertised all that you might be able to do much better um i definitely agree with a lot of that i think there is definitely some room for the pro element to grow whether it be through sponsorship or like you know other uh commitments from like you know company stores even wizards wizards needs to make that first step and be like okay this is how we want to grow uh the uh player base etc and there's one final point i just want to bring up what does you know does Jerry's uh, opinion on more Pro Tour invites make sense? I think yes, because the last Pro Tour didn't have very many players. I think it was like 300. It wasn't very large. And that, if you think about that, that draws a lot from like, you know, uh, there's a lot of invites in North America. There's a lot of invites. Well, I don't actually know the specifics. Invites in Europe, but, uh, you know, Asia... Um, the and South America and that's those don't get a lot of invites, right? Uh, but I understand that you know the numbers are lower, but you know where does it stop? Do we want to open up more invites? Do we want larger pro tour events? I think the, we do. I think I definitely think I do. I, I think you I know. I hundred percent agree with you guys. Um, look at look at other to use a bad term nerd sports like Overwatch, League of Legends. They have teams from all over the world competing. So, and one thing about that is people love to root for their home team. Oh, absolutely! Like, imagine if they brought back regionals or something, like something that you can watch locally and even compete in locally, so you can potentially make it to the top. People love that tournament story. People love the grind. Like, to use a really bad term, look at like Yu-Gi-Oh and the tournament arcs. People love that. Those stories are what people come to competitive gaming for. That's that's very true, Bo. Um, I mean, we have regionals, we have worlds, we have nationals. Actually, no, we don't have regionals anymore, do we? I don't think we do. No, regionals no, are only, no longer it's, a it's thing. It's only nationals. Yeah. Yeah, like but nationals aren't like 
Nationals are a pretty big deal. I they're, mean, like that's they're how you, a big that's deal. How you get on the team, man. Yeah, <laughs> that's how you get on your world team or your country's team. And yeah. there's uh, definitely uh, some room to grow. So I think Jerry makes some solid points. Uh, I think that it definitely needs to be reviewed. Uh, what Wizards' statement was over the weekend of how they're going to look into it further and about their experimentation process that they're going to be doing. You know, that's great and all, but uh, we'll see how it goes. Yeah. Uh, next up. On to our next topic. Yeah, Guilds of Ravnica. Oh, boy. So this is a topic I like a lot. I'm also super excited. So I'm going to... Uh, I'm just going to say what my top card is right away. Okay. And uh, mm -hmm. then I'm going to let you two definitely uh, evaluate this more. I think that the card that is going to affect the most is going to be Assassin's Trophy. <laughs> and <Yep. laughs> you, yeah, okay. you and everybody else. Who would have thought? Yeah, so it's, it's, thought? It's, 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 it's a pretty big hit. You have Path to Exile and Vindicate at instant speed. I'm sorry. But, you know, there's a, there's a power creep. In magic, path, path to vindication. Path to vindication. They should have named it. That, that would have been a good name. Oh, that would have been awful. That would have been a sweet name. Can it, we? Then it would have to be black white though, because path is a white card and vindicate is a black. I white don't think card. it needs to be uh, black or white. I think it can still be green white. Or I, green, feel, I sorry, feel like the card will work in either the color the set. Name, path of vindication doesn't really sound like a green. Oh, card. we're getting we're getting ahead of regardless. Ourselves now, yeah. yeah, we're yeah. getting we're so getting ahead of ourselves. <laughs> All right, so. Uh, what do you guys think of uh, Guild of Ravnica? Overall, I love the set. Like, I, I love Ravnica as a plane. Like, I think it has the best flavor out of any plane in all of Magic. Like, s giant world city filled with all sorts of crazy stuff. Like, imagine a Ravnica MMO. That would be crazy. So, I'm an avid uh, anti-MMO person. Oh, right. I forgot about this. The, only, the, last, the MMO that I actually play the most is Star Trek Online. And... That's because, I don't know, it's probably the only MMO that's actually spoken to me over the last 20-ish years. And, you know, all the power to, you know, World of Warcraft, uh, League of Legends, and all that stuff. But it ain't my jam, and right, I don't think I, I I don't think Magic would be good as an MMO. Well, I, I, I mean just the plane of Ravnica itself, like just the world. I just think that would be like an D &D. awesome setting. Just play D and D Ravnica. Fair. D and D Ravnica. I'm very excited for that. By yeah, the way, we're gonna be having um, fun with that. Yeah. What's your thoughts on Assassin's Trophy? My thoughts on Assassin's. Well, it's a great card. Like, oh, I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing. Just, I, I will say, when I saw it get spoiled, I actually uh, went through a bunch of new check pile lists to try to figure out if I could make check pile and legacy work without <laughs> Deathrite Shaman. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, the answer was hell no. <laughs> But I really, really was hoping I could I could salvage something together just because this trophy seemed so sweet to me. It was like a whole reason to play green apart from Leovold. Like now we weren't just in green for Leovold and Ada Cave. We also had a trophy. No, for sure. But like, like the the card is nuts. Like you know, oh, just yeah, be it's an so instant <laughs> speed. <laughs> Yeah, uh, instant speed of like yeah, no, it's awesome. it's nuts. Especially well, in, uh, in before we get too ahead of ourselves, let's actually say what the card does. Oh, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, totally. So for one green and one black, uh, you get an instant that says destroy target permanent. Period. Its controller may search his or her library uh, for a basic land card and put it into play untapped. But, I mean, who cares? Yeah, I and mean, also in like, do you destroy your own permanent to get an extra land? You can't. I mean, it, is it says an opponent's permanent. Oh, Sorry. okay, oh, that's okay. that's a, a big okay. deal. Uh, also, then no. In <laughs> in eternal internal formats, uh, most decks play one or two basics. So if that deck has drawn and or played one or two basics, it might just literally be a strictly better vindicate. Vindicate is uh, one colorless white black, right? Yeah, one and colorless sorcery. white black and sorcery for blow up a permanent. So, I mean, if you're playing an Abzan list, do you just like play four Vindicates and four Assassin's Oh my god, trophy? no. Then you're playing way too many expensive bad cards, I think. I think you, you, I we think just you call play... Assassin's Trophy a great card, and Vindicate is a great card. Okay, yes, but, but when you're Check playing your four of each, privilege, sir. when you're playing <laughs> four of each, I think you're playing badly. Like, I, I highly disagree. You know what? I think you should build that deck. 
and get completely run over by everything with cheap counter spells. I will not build that deck for one reason and one reason only. They, I don't have Death Ray Shaman. <laughs> yeah, fair. Uh, yeah, so I, I don't think I don't think it'll be very good uh, in current legacy meta game. But I think a split of maybe like one and three could easily be correct. Um. All no, right. not easily, but it could be correct. Regardless, well, uh, yeah, we've heard Richard's we can, favorite card for the set. So, what's your on. overall favorite card? Uh, mine is less of a single card and more of a cycle. I love the uncommon double color casting cost card, like the cycle. Uh, so, it's four, or sorry, it's five four drops, one of each color combination, and it's two of the Guild's Mana symbols. So, let's say the Boris one is red, red, white, white. Um, and they're just kind of really pushed on common. So the, the Boros one is red, red, white, white for a 4-3 with Mentor, and whenever it's dealt damage, it deals that much damage to target player. So uh, it's kind of like name? a Boros Reckoner. Uh, it's a True Fire Captain. Mm -hmm. um, the Is It one is blue, blue, red, red, called Crackling Drake. It's a star four with flying, and when ent and it's, sorry, its power is equal to the total number of instant and or sorcery cards you own in Exile and the Graveyard. So it also counts jumpstarted spells. Uh, and when it enters the battlefield, you draw a card. So it's like a better Enigma Drake, basically. Uh, the Demir one is blue, blue, black, black for a 3-3 three, three with flying, death touch, and hexproof. Because those two abilities weren't too good on a creature anyways, so now he's got to give it hexproof. Yeah, the... Uh, le let's... <laughs> <laughs> so that's 6-6 six, six hexproof that uh, they're printing. Oh, the new set. one. The new one? Oh, the, you, you mean Ferox, Nullhide Ferox? Yeah. Oh, God, that is disgusting. I, I, I would love it for my uh, Grixis control opponent to just play their, their Nicol Bolas, please. Yeah. Nicol Bolas I mean, the Ravager. Oh, I got a discarded card? Okay, thanks for the 0 minus 6 6. Yeah, exactly. Right? Like, oh, you, you want to kill it? Ah, too bad. I buddy. mean, <laughs> what, you, what you don't gain, like, uh, Obstinate Bailoth, you gain 4 life. Um, Guilt Leaf Leads, you gain a, uh, a Lord. Uh, this, you get a 6 6 Hex. With Hexproof. Yeah. It's disgusting. It is like, filthy. <laughs> I mean,. I don't think it's very good because it can just be chump blocked for days. Yeah. If I recall correctly, it does not have tr uh, trample. Um, but yeah, it's it's very good. So what else is on? Uh, yours? So yeah, so th there's two other cards. Uh, there's the Golgaria one is black, black, green, green for a three four. That when it enters the battlefield, you get to regrowth a permanent. So it's kind of like a bad Eternal Witness, but Eternal Witness is the nuts. And also it's a three four, which is a respectable body. I mean that's that is significantly bigger than Eternal Witness. Yeah. Right, but which is which is nice, but, but it only returns a permanent, and the color, right? It's it's not as good. Uh, and finally, the Selesnya one, the one that I'm actually most excited excited about, uh, green green one white for a four four vigilance, which is already pretty respectable for four mana. And then when it dies, you make two two twos with vigilance. That's pretty good. I'm like, like I read the first part, I was like, you know, what, four four for four with vigilance. That's fine. When it dies, it just makes two more two twos. Like, I mean, if you can put that on some sort of like, you know block something that's bigger and yeah. then sack it and then you know you have still dudes right? exactly like you you just and you can just always attack with impunity with it right because if they block it and kill it you're taking down some of their creatures and you still have two two twos yeah like it's absurd it's basically eight mana for four mana i mean that's, you know, that's insane really good yeah it's it's really i think it's actually like one of the the best ones out of all the uh the spoiled ones. i think it's it's probably the strongest one um all right, Bo, do you have any favorites from Goes of Ravnica? Yeah, I have a few. Um, I'm really excited for the reprint of, Re of We Dragonauts. I think that cloud, that card is hilarious. <laughs> I, I love the art. I just love that it's just two small little fairies just flying through the skies with some the, kind of lightning thing. The card thing. is very awesome, I will admit. Yeah. The is, it's hilarious. And to me. my other pick, it's a weird one, but I don't know. For some reason, this card just speaks to me. Demir Spybug, the one blue, one oh, black. That card is adorable. Tiny little insect dude where card is whenever really, you really survey, cute. it gets a 1 1 counter. I don't know. That's just like the most magic card to me. It's like interacts with the set. It's pretty decent for its bot for its cast costing cast and body. Casting cost. Yeah, and like I like the art. It's just a little fly dude. He's cute. Those are some uh, solid reasons, though. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so we have the Guilds of Ravnica pre-release coming up this week. 
Yes. Uh, on the 29th. 29th and 30th. Yeah. Uh, if you haven't pre-registered for uh, the event yet, we suggest that you pre-register at least before Wednesday. That way you s- yeah. s- can still select uh, what guild you want to play. Uh, spots are filling up rather fast. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, Ravnica has always been a popular uh, set from the original to return to now. You're going to have, like, some of the best times playing Magic because Guild Magic is fantastic Nothing magic. Nothing beats Guild Magic. Yeah, like, there's a reason why some of the best decks that have ever been piloted are always been, like, two to three colors. They're just, you know, Yeah, fantastic. multicolor is better. Multicolor is better, except when it comes to, like, uh, burn. That's not true. I think Red White Burn is the better one in Modern. Regardless, actually, sorry, speaking of Modern, speaking and of modern, speaking yeah. of Red White uh, with a bit of Green Burn, yeah. Um, we have a we have the top our, eight list. Yeah, we from, have the top uh, eight list from our Modern IQ that we just had yesterday on yeah. the twenty second of September. Absolutely. Um, um, and you know, I, we got a shout out to these eight guys. Uh, so watching the stream yesterday was fantastic, and I loved every second of it. But I got to give a shout out to uh, Evan T. Uh, he is our. He was the Finally winner. Finally, piloted the deck right. He. <laughs> 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 uh, he was our uh, winner uh, yesterday. Uh, in second place uh, was Tyler Nightingale. Uh, in third was uh, Jacob Richer. Uh, in fourth, Matt Hemsley. Fifth, Ellis Strike Straker. Straker. Uh, number six was Eric Lee. Seven was uh, Dave Goldfarb, and uh, number eight was Jeffrey Fernandez. Good old Jeff. Good old Jeff. Was he playing KCI? Of course he was. <laughs> 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 All right. So let, let's let's just talk about like some of the decks that uh, happened here. So. Uh, Jeff was playing KCI. It was this. It's the same list that he ran actually at the last event, uh, and it was you know pretty sweet. Yeah, just like KCI always is. Yeah, I, I hate the deck so much, but it's such I an awesome deck. Everybody hates the deck. <laughs> That's the thing. It's the it's it's the boogeyman. It is. It's the, a new twin, sort of. Yeah, sort it, of. Not. It's not as cool. Nothing as, as good as twin. Nothing is unbanned as twin. twin. But you know, uh, <laughs> so. Uh, KCI, uh, Dave Goldfarb played Burn. So the best Burn deck, uh, the red white one. Okay, <laughs> the red white one, sure. <laughs> uh, so actually, you know, I've known Dave for a long time, and I've never seen him play Burn. Really? Yeah. I. I this is actually the first time when I just when I was looking at the deck list, I was like, really, he's playing Burn? <laughs> <laughs> the last the Amazing. last time though, I I believe I watched him play. Uh, he was playing, I think, uh, I want to say he was playing uh, a control deck, but I can't remember which one. Oh, I think Bird it was... Bird is a control deck. It controls your life total. <laughs> Can you count down to 20? Yes. <laughs> uh, but I think he was playing uh, a control deck uh, at the GP, and I can't remember... Oh, wait. No, he was playing Burn at the GP. Oh, so there yeah, you go. Because he had in, he brought out in snaring bridges against his opponent. <laughs> it was it was nice. interesting. <laughs> um, all right, so Eric Lee, he was playing Druid Combo, which, which he has been playing for a long time, if I recall correctly. Yes, he loves yeah. his deck. It has you know, I, if I, Court of Calling and Collected Company, those cards are just my so favorite. So I actually, I played him in the tournament, and you lost, right? Uh, I did lose. I'm very angry at my loss. Uh, it was because of a terrible mulligan in game three. That's too bad. It is too bad. But regardless, it, this isn't... I In game one, so I sit down, and I'm like, okay, I know he's a Vizier Druid player. Like, I know, like this is this is knowledge. This is my knowledge. He goes uh, land, dork, say whatever, like land, hardened scales, go. He goes uh, land and plays a, um, a Knight of the Reliquary. So I'm like, wait, is he not playing druid anymore like i've never seen uh knight of the reliquary in druid decks and so i next turn like i'm really scared of the knight because like i know how out of control it can get so i go uh ballista x1 hardened skills makes it two. use both counters kill your um your knight and i kept playing as if he was a knight deck i was kind of just playing like kind of slow like not really 
trying to clock him aggressively. And then out of nowhere, he goes, uh, end of your turn, cord for Vizier. Um, or sorry, co cord for uh, Druid on his turn, untap, Vizier, infinite mana, cord for whatever, find the bliss to shoot you. I'm like, what just happened? Like, I, yeah. I, I thought you were on a completely different deck. Uh, and then, whatever, then I ended up losing the match to um, shipping away a good hand. But, uh, yeah, the deck the deck list is not just stock Vizier Druid. It, no, it has it's it has it's, some extra. It has uh, it has spice. Eric's own twist on it. Yeah, <laughs> um, watch for out sure. for it. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> uh, so that brings us to Marty Pyromancer from uh, Ellis. Ellis. This is just a pretty stock list. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I love Goblin Rabble Master. I like the two Kambal console evocation in the sideboard. Is it really? Yeah. Oh Two wow! Uh, I think he might have been anticipating a lot of control and like s combo, like uh, KCI and Storm, mm -hmm. um, and Burn. Actually, it's, he's also really uh, he's really good against Burn. I mean, he eats a Burn spell and gains you two life, right? I mean, looking at the top eight list, he made a, he made a good choice. <laughs> yeah, um, he didn't win the event, but I mean, you don't win every event exactly. It's no, it's it was uh, I I really like his sideboard actually. Um that that's about it. <laughs> uh that's next about it. next up is uh Matt Helm Hemsley, Hemsley yes. uh on Harden Scales, which is a deck I was playing and yes, I lost the mirror. Welcome. I lost the mirror. You lost did you lose the mirror? I Matt? lost to Matt. Okay. Um Is that it, because you was inexperienced with the deck or I think it's because I was inexperienced with the deck. Okay, yeah. Uh, yeah, the deck has a lot of uh how do I put this? I, triggers? I was <laughs> no, that's actually not my issue. I was inexperienced with sideboarding. I you know, I was thinking if I should bring in my dismember against him, and I decided against it for some reason, and I assumed that he would have decided against it too. And then I tried to um Sack my board to Ravager, put the counters on my Ink Moth. He killed the Ink Moth, and I was left dead in the water. Uh, and I lost that game, and then I lost the third game to him going turn one hardened scales. And that match, that that mirror match, seems a lot like if you don't get the hardened scales, and your opponent does, you lose. Well, I think you know the hardened scales is a key component to the combo. Yeah. Uh, well, and you know. When you're playing against the deck or even with the deck, you have to make your smart mulligans uh, count. Uh, it's the yeah. same like regular infini affinity. Uh, you know, people will be like, oh, I can just pick up this deck and play it. I mean, yeah, you can, no problem, but you don't know what hands to keep or what to mulligan with. Yeah. It's, they're really smart choices. And, you know, it's the same thing. This is just an upgraded, a realistically, an upgraded version of, of affinity. affinity. Yeah. Playing, uh, really playing modular cards. This, I've actually, I feel like this deck is more of a combo deck than affinity. Well, uh, affinity is a combo deck. The, so, uh, affinity still has a lot of, like, beatdown components in that a lot of your, like, zero drops, one drops of that are just stuff to deal more damage. Whereas in this deck, a lot of your one drops are actually just a way to make either a Ballista Huge and shoot your opponent for lethal, which I have done on turn four relatively consistently, mm -hmm. or make a huge hanger back that you pop and activate a um, a Steel Overseer on to make a bunch of 3-3s, three or, like, killing with the Ink Moth next. It's like, I I've never actually won with a beatdown game. It just, like, it just kind of hit me. Out. Like, I've never won with a beatdown. It, it was always have a huge walking Ballista, shoot you for lethal, have a huge hanger back, Pop it in return, and they're like, okay, like I lose now because you have 21 one thopters. It really doesn't feel like a beatdown deck. And then I actually tried out a friend's affinity deck, and it really, it really felt like a beatdown. It felt like a completely different deck. So I think calling Hardened Scales affinity a better affinity list is wrong. I think it's just an altered affinity list that is stronger in the current meta. That's definitely a fair opinion. Um, so I got the. Uh, uh, just before we just go on to the last uh, couple there, uh, we got some questions from our viewers or well, listeners uh, that we're going to answer a bit later. Oh, but uh, okay. some of them some of them are pretty cool. Uh, thanks guys for sending those out to us. Uh, but let's move on to uh, humans, which I believe was piloted by yes Jacob Richer. So I've played humans against uh, you. I have played it against Bo. I have played. Have you played it against me? Yes. 
What was I playing? I don't remember uh, you were playing Prison. We had a we had a match here after hours. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I've been also played so quickly because Humans is such a good matchup for Monterey Prison. <laughs> yeah, it's a uh, so I'm zero for two against you guys. Yeah. And that's, that's that is <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> No, so just because I think the humans <laughs> deck is like good against certain stuff, but really bad against what me and Bill play. Yes, uh, Mono Blue Tron and Prison are not fun decks. That's why, you know, on uh, MTGO, I'm much more satisfied when I crush those decks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's fair. <laughs> um, but yeah, the, the the deck itself looks like a pretty um, standard list. I do like the three militia buglers that seem to be popping up a lot more. Uh, I love that card so so very much. Um, Apart from that, really nothing popping out at me. Um, yeah, pretty much nothing. It's just a stock humans list. Not much else. I mean, there's stock lists for a reason. Uh, like, you know, once a deck has been uh, proven to be uh, good, you're only changing the sideboard for uh, the metagame. Yeah. And yeah, that's, that's usually fair. what you expect. Uh, so, final two prisons, players. Yeah. We're in the last two. We are in the last two of uh, this uh, top eight. So, we have Tyler who played Blue, Blue Red, Red Prison. Prison. Yes. So, this deck is awesome. Bottled Cloister is such a cool magic card. I'm just looking at it and wow. Yeah. So, Tezra, Agent of Bolus. Oh, yeah. Were of Invention. Yep. Uh, where is, is it? Sweet. Bottled Cloister. And so Psy, Master Thopterus. And, wow. This is... Yeah. This is... So, cool thing. Wow. Tyler, I'm just going to say this to you right now, man. This is this is crazy. This is a sick list. I have seen this list before online. I've seen it in five zero undefeated uh, modern challenges or whatever. Uh, leagues. Modern leagues. Modern so, yeah, leagues. Five yeah. undefeated in the leagues, and I've actually seen it top eight uh, modern challenge. Uh, this deck is amazing. I want to play this deck. Oh, I'll just let's you, just leave it at that. You have this. Sick obsession with prison decks. I do. Prison <laughs> is probably my favorite archetype. Uh, I hate it when my opponents play magic. And see, this is why no one likes you. <laughs> yeah. You play prison decks. No, that's you know that's entirely... <laughs> I don't like myself for it, but I, I can't <laughs> stop. It's like an addiction. An addiction to prison decks. But so my, the most beautiful thing about this list is the bottled cloister and ensnaring bridge, which um, just... Do you want to go ahead and just say what bl bottled cloister does? Because this is yeah. ridiculous. So I'm, I'm, I guess so. It's a four mana artifact from uh, Ravnica block. I don't know if it's Ravnica. It was City exactly. of Guilds. Yeah. City of Guilds. Yeah. Uh, and it basically says you draw an extra card, but at the end of your turn, you lose your hand until the next turn. So you exile your hand face down, and then at the beginning of your next upkeep, you put it like you, um, you pick it up again, and also pick up an extra card from the top of your library, and then you go to your draw step. So so okay so then I have a question about this. So a couple of weeks ago, uh, when you were playing in our last modern event, mm -hmm. and you put in the Arvacious Dragon, yes. Why did you not just upgrade the land base and play Bottle Cloister or Cloister? So Bottle Cloister is actually colorless. It's so why colorless. didn't you play so it? So my reason for not playing it is because in mono red, I would much rather have a four four beater, right? This is the first time I've heard of this card, so if he just did not know about it, that's also a perfectly viable reason. No, no, no. I, I've I, never I, seen this thing before in my life. I've known of Bottled Cloister for a bit, but I've just I like Avaricious Dragon in that deck specifically more, just because it's a beater. It's a beater. Yeah. Right, and the deck sometimes has issues in closing out the game. Normally, when you have it along with Ensnaring Bridge, it's not a beater anymore. But I like that when it when you don't have Ensnaring Bridge, it still does something more than just draw you an extra card every turn. That's Which fair. it also does, right? Yeah. So, so <sighs> miracles is uh, oh. modern miracles. I Let's hate that <laughs> deck so much. Burning, burning hatred towards that deck. And this is the modern version or like the legacy version? The modern version. The legacy version is super easy for me. All right. So <laughs> again, <laughs> well, somebody, I'm not even gonna say. You're just being cocky That's just right now. That's fine. But you know. Well, you're, allow I mean, you're, you're, think, you're allowed think, to be. I think my Delver deck is actually pretty good against Miracles just because it's an aggro So deck. is that a challenge to all the players out there in that Toronto? Is, 
all Kay. you Miracles players, please come to the Harry Tarantula Challenge Series Legacy events so I can crush you with my team or Delver. Or, you know, you can crush him. It's it's realistically, Good luck. that's probably the easiest one. Yeah, that's probably that's gonna Regardless, <laughs> Modern our, Blue White Miracles. Modern Blue White Miracles <laughs> were piloted by our very own Evan. T. Oh, T, yeah. So... <laughs> <laughs> the last few weeks, we've seen Evan pick up this deck, and uh, you know he's to varying had, success. To varying success in that, and to see him not only top eight the event, but, but also, to also get to the finals. Get to the finals, yes. coming first. This is a man who dedicated. I'm very proud of this gentleman. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I had a lot of feedback uh, yesterday from a lot of players about Evan winning, and they they were just super excited. Everyone was just like, "Yeah, Evan, woo!" And like, <laughs> no, it's, yeah, no, it's it's actually it was like everybody always gives him crap for not knowing how to play control, and then he's like, "Okay, you know what? Screw you guys! I'm just gonna win the tournament." Yeah, exactly. And he just did it right. Like, Absolutely, it's really um, awesome. And you know, I look at this list, and every single card I love. You know, you have Teferi, you have Jace, you have Snapcaster Mage. <laughs> You have you have all Cryptic these beautiful command. cards. You have Search for Escanta, mm. and you know you have Terminus. It treats yeah. the angels. This is a this is this is a awesome. piece of yes, awesome, awesome this is a piece art. of awesome beautiful it is art. art. It, it gets me <laughs> mm. like especially you know when I look at his sideboard, right? Uh, there's th three cards that it's I absolutely Bain love. Angel. Bane Slayer Angel. <laughs> so, did you know that Bane Slayer Angel used to have a nickname called Wallet Slayer? Yeah, because uh, it was the first card to be over a hundred dollars, right? Uh, no, well, it was the first card that hit the. F it's so, like the second week of uh, rotation or when the new set came in, it was like a fifty dollar card. After that, it's kind of kind of climbed with Jace in the format as well and Stoneforge Mystic in, in the well. The the tier of decks that were being played with fetch lands and all this stuff, standard was a, this, this was Cowboys standard, right? Uh, yes, sort it of. Was, it was sort of. It was like just before, uh, like the pieces of Cowboys uh, just got uh, axed out. So it was like Cogo. Yeah. Okay. Um. But you know, Bane Slayer Angel, you are an all star. Rep <laughs> reprint her, like she needs a new home. Uh, they basically did. Lyra Dawnbringer. <laughs> Lyra Basically. Da Not the okay, same. Lyra Dawnbringer is also a very lord, close. But sure. Uh, so, that's, uh, you know, Blue White Miracles yeah. takes down uh, this ACS. week's uh, challenge series. Uh, now, what else we got going on? It's pre-release this weekend. Yes. Uh, oh. Pre-release is going to be awesome. I'm very excited to play with my my four drops. Uh, I hope everybody else enjoys playing with their not four drops. Yeah, we have. So we have a uh, we have a pre-release challenge series for this week. Yes. So uh, this has been actually asked by a couple of players. Is this a competitive uh, REL event, which is rules, which is rules enforcement? The answer is no. This is a Doesn't. regular rules enforcement level, and what this means is that. Uh, you know, despite the fact that it's a 1K event and, you know, you, you get packs, you get store credit. It also costs the same as a pre-release, right? Uh, it's just a little bit more because the pricing is... That's right. Uh, it's like, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, like it's, it's like $40, I believe. Okay. Yeah, it's um, not that much more. We can just get that double-checked. Oh. Uh, so we're just getting our producer here to uh, <laughs> do that up for you. Um, um the... But yeah, no, it's awesome. I would recommend it for sure for anybody who, you know, thinks that they can. Yeah, I mean, like you know, take it down. It is, is, uh, so Bo is giving us the thumbs up that the uh, event is actually forty dollars, mm -hmm. and the start time of it is what? Starts at twelve. Uh, so the event starts at uh, twelve p.m. Yes. All right. Yeah. So and registration opens at eleven, but you can register online up until then, basically. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so that's super exciting. And then oh, uh, pre-reg. Don't forget pre-reg. If you pre-reg, you get to choose your guild. Yes. Uh, so if you don't pre-register and you just kind of show up and register, you will just be assigned a random guild. Mm -hmm. um, but if you can pre-register, you can choose which guild you get, which is awesome. Absolutely. Uh, so that brings us up to, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on in the store, but one of the exciting things is our very first season 
yes of the league series uh is coming to an end uh this week and it was a good one too and it was t- yeah i mean it's been a uh wild ride the past i three mean the, months. the winners have pretty much already been determined for there's a, four of our five events yes it's pretty close actually so we're just going to read the uh Wait, top things here all right there's so uh tuesday night uh popper uh, right. which we have at the store at 7 p.m. every Tuesday, uh, is currently led by Lyle Waldman at uh, 52 points, Not which surprising. is, you know, He's pretty good. And here. that is a 30-point difference <laughs> between first and second. Wow. So that is a huge... Pretty much locked down for yeah, Lyle. Yeah, here locked down. <laughs> Congrats, Lyle. Um, next is uh, Legacy with uh, <sighs> Bruce Petrie. Yeah, you're on this list somewhere. Where are you? I'm here. Fifth. You're fifth. You're fifth. You're going really down low, eh? <laughs> no confidence <laughs> in me whatsoever. What? So what if you were an 18th? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, you're at 21 points for this season, but Bruce has been crushing it with 49 yeah. points. Yeah. And that is fantastic. Standard. So, you know the guy that uh, won our SCG uh, IQ this past weekend? Yeah. He's crushing it in standard. Is he now? Is he, yeah. He is points leader at uh, 36 points, and uh, his name is Evan T. I can't, <laughs> pronounce, I can't pronounce Evan's last name. I've known him for four I years. I'm going to attempt it, and I'm probably going to get yelled at. I think it's Evan Sirigianis. That actually sounds something like it, so I'm gonna smile and just say yes. Okay, <laughs> Evan. Uh, if I said it wrong, I'm so sorry. Yeah, you can uh, talk to Yaval about that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> next, uh, now see, Evan has uh, 36 points, and the next person down is five points behind them. So, realistically, yeah. If if, if Evan goes 03 and the the person beneath him goes 30, yeah, then they switch places. And in which case, uh, Sean Siegel would uh, Sean win. Sean Segal. Sean, yeah. yeah. Sean Segal would win uh, this. Uh, so that one's not as cut and dry. No. This one is pretty close. And it's basically the difference of going 3 0 or uh, 3. Yeah. Uh, next is uh, our largest event of every week is Friday Night Magic, it's our 7 p.m. modern event. So. It's We're it's so many people. <laughs> so th- I want to just stay, uh, stay here. If you look at the other events, uh, you know, Popper Legacy Standard, they're like, you know, smaller in comparison. They don't, uh, they draw uh, specific uh, players. Mm-hmm. And, but Toronto is a modern town. Yes, 100%. We have it's 65 city, people on this list for, you know, uh, running the points. And like the, that's how many people we've had play, like how many separate people we've had play in modern. Yeah, since, our, modern se- events, since, since our season started. Yeah. And you can, uh, from, you know, let's just look at the top 20, for example. Uh, yeah, the top tw- So we start at 27 points uh, with. And um, it just goes higher. Ben <laughs> Lou, and it just goes up higher. Uh, Gary Maguire and Ian Ding have been switching back and forth the past few weeks. Uh, there is now a 23-point difference between oh first God. and second. And this is the last Friday that they will have to uh, compete. But I'm pretty sure that even if, uh, yeah, even if Gary, Gary goes 3-0, he's, not, he's beating not beating Ian. So Ian is so 100% winner Ian, of Modern. We are definitely, congratulations, Ian. Yes, yeah. uh, we are super happy about all this. How many points does he have? Uh, he, he has 99 out of a possible 132. Oh, my God. Oh my God. Yeah, that's awesome. Yes, Good job. that is fantastic Good job. job. Uh, we're all very proud of you, and we're proud of all of you guys. You guys have been great this past season. Now, let's talk about what the closest point is with our Monday night drafts. All right, so we have Josh Kim at 69 points. <laughs> and we have Sean Ang at... 72 points. Oh my, they're literally they have a been, match went away. They have been neck and neck yeah. for many weeks ah, I now. I love those two. And yeah, they are they are so awesome and we're really looking looking forward to seeing how Monday goes. Uh but, you know, 
other than the fact that uh, I'm actually going to yeah. Vancouver with uh, Josh. Are you? In December, yeah. Oh, very nice. Well, uh, uh, are you going to the GP? Yeah. Cool. Also well, going to Montreal. Uh, there's a GP on October 6th and 7th in Montreal, if I remember correctly, right? Limited. Are you going? Uh, no. I'll be working. Thumbs down. <laughs> Would have liked to see you there. I think Josh is going. Okay. That's fine. Anyway. <laughs> Just a cool little Good, good luck, so Yvonne and Josh. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so that's... That's that pretty much all yeah. we have for tonight, right? That is definitely that is the wrap for tonight. Oh, actually, wait. I have one more thing I want to do. Uh, quick shout out to what's this guy's name? To Tay T K O S five or T K O S seven on Reddit, the dude who wrote the ninety nine page primer for Bluetron. Oh my god! So <laughs> I think I sh- I don't remember if I shared that link with you or not. I or actually saw it the yeah. night before because I, I was yeah. just doing you my shared usual. Link with me, uh, I and share, I was okay. like, what is? going on why is the this the second thing? i found it i immediately started reading there it i've never felt more connected with a human being than when i read that thing i there was a guy who made a, a list for fairies in modern and i was very excited about that one I but yeah uh, overall i would say that's a very good primer for bluetron if you want to check out the deck check it out it's on reddit uh it should be on the front page of the modern magic subreddit all right so we have a question uh oh, regarding yes uh the store and <laughs> who is this from and what do they say <laughs> so this one is from uh mike shootoff okay Kay. hey shout out to mike hey mike so bonjour he, he wants to know if our humans. play space is going to be expanded and short answer is yes c uh, Long answer is uh, take a bit of time. It will just take a little bit of time because we're in the middle of doing the downstairs yeah. as well. So once we're that is studio. complete, we will have uh, that. Yes, our studio is going to be down there, so yes. we can uh, <laughs> have like color commentary during feeds. Oh, assuming I'm so that we can excited. get the audio issue f- resolved with video. Oh, apparently, I'm that so was OBS. Excited. That's OBS. Yeah. All right. Can't wait to do coverage. Um, <laughs> yes. So. That'll definitely be fun. And that's a wrap for this week's episode. All right. Uh, I'm back in town as well. Yes. Shout out to Richard. I am not the best, but thank you. You are the best. Uh, Among very many other people who are also the best. Aw. Well, thank you guys for coming out again another week. Uh, And uh, we can talk about the pre-release. We can talk about the pre-release because it leads up to what our next challenge series is, which is the sealed, the, the sealed limited. So we can deck. actually compare, kind of like yeah. what happened in the pre-release versus what happened at because uh, they are two very different yes. things. One is regular. Oh, actually, RL, one I'm not going to be there for that. I I'm, in I'm in Montreal. I'm sorry. I'm going to be playing the limited format. I'll let you know how it goes on Sunday when I make day two. I'll call you and give you the the rundown. But you have to know my phone number. I'm not sure I can find it. <laughs> All right, guys, so that's a wrap for uh, this week's episode of The Flashback. Thanks for uh, spending some time with us. Uh, I'm Richard. I'm Yuval. And I'm Bo. See you next time. I was going to make a joke about.